So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install a garage door opener so that you don't have to open and close the garage door by hand. So we've already unpacked the garage door opener. This one came off of Amazon and you can get uh, openers like this just about anywhere online. This one's a half horsepower, which is the right size for most residential garage doors. If yours is made of wood or some other material that's extra heavy, you might need to move up to a three quarter horsepower or larger. You'll wanna just check to make sure that the opener that you're purchasing is the right size for the door that you plan to use it for. One other quick note, this is a belt drive door opener and instead of a chain drive, the belt drives are quieter than chain and the belt is uh, steel reinforced and has a guarantee for something like 10 or 15 years. So uh, it's, a, it's an excellent choice uh, if you can afford a little bit extra. They do cost just a little bit more, um, but be aware that that's the kind that we're gonna be installing today as a belt drive. Now if you're installing a chain drive, most of the steps are gonna be exactly the same. Mainly the difference is gonna be with the pulley system for how the chain or the belt uh, is driven by the motor. So before we begin, I wanna go over a couple of things you wanna make sure are available before you start this kind of a project. The first is, on the door itself, you'll need to make sure that there is a mounting bracket or some sort of reinforced something that you can screw your mount bracket for the garage door opener itself. If there is not one on your door, then you'll need to go purchase one. Those can be found at most big box retail stores. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure you've got uh, available is an outlet near where you're gonna be installing the garage door opener up on your ceiling. If you don't already have one there, you're gonna to need to find a way to get one there. Uh, there's plenty of options for doing that, uh, and I'll leave that to you to figure out. Um, but luckily we already have one here, so we can skip that step. So you'll need to also make sure that you've got wires like these already installed. Uh, before you can put up the opener. If you don't have wires like this, these, these were installed here by the builder. Uh, one of them is gonna be for the uh, opener on the wall, and then the other two are gonna be for the sensors at the bottom of the door. And if you don't already have those installed, then you'll need to get those installed yourself. You don't have to put them through the drywall like that. You can just use a staple gun to attach them to the surface or to the studs if you don't have a finished ceiling in your garage. So this particular kit comes with uh, wiring already. We're not going to be using this for this install, except for just a little short part of these on the sensors. But you can see these are the two sensors that go at the bottom of the door, and this would be the wire that goes to the garage door opener by the, uh, the entrance to the home. Um, so, like I said, you'll need to make sure that these are already run or, uh, or run them yourself if they're not. The next thing you need to make sure you're prepared with is brackets to mount your motor to the ceiling. Now, this particular kit does come with these little brackets but they're pretty flimsy. I think this is like 24 or something gauge. Um, it's, it's not very strong. So for this project, we decided to go with something a little stronger. This is 18 gauge steel and uh, picked it up at the local big box store. And uh, this is what we're gonna be using to span the trusses. There'll be a truss that goes this way and a truss that goes this way. We'll just screw this up with some lag bolts up into the ceiling and that'll give us the bracket uh, to mount down for the motor. One other thing before you get started, before you even order the garage door opener, you'll need to make sure you know the height of your door. This particular door is eight feet. Most residential doors are only seven. And most garage door openers, the kits come designed for a seven foot door. Yeah, this one is exactly eight feet. So we've also ordered, in addition to the garage door opener, we've ordered an extension kit that will allow this opener to work with the taller door. So the extension kit's gonna come with a couple of things. First, it's gonna come with a longer belt that will reach the extra distance. And then also, the last piece of rod is gonna be longer. This is the one that came with the opener, and we're gonna swap that out for this longer one, which has the extra foot in it, to account for the extra height in the door. So the first step is to transfer the center of the door up to your header up above the torsion spring up here. So to do that, I'm gonna grab this kind of longer level, and I'm gonna line up the lower portion of the level with the center of the door. And I'm gonna make sure that the level indicates that it is perfectly vertical. Then I'm gonna use a pencil and just make a, a little mark right here along the front edge of that level to indicate where on the wall the center of the door would fall. Once that's done, now we need to pull up the door to find the highest portion of its travel. And you'll use the level again to reach from the topmost part of the door all the way over to the wall. And you'll adjust the level until the bubble in the center indicates that you are going straight back from the top of the highest point of travel of the door. 
Once you've done that, you can drop the door again, but make sure you don't move the level on the wall. And then you can make a mark along the bottom of the level that will intersect the vertical mark that you already made on the wall indicating the center of the door. Once you've done that, now you need to measure up two inches from the mark you've just made to make sure that there's plenty of clearance over the top of the door so that the rail you're going to install doesn't interfere or hit the door at all. So I'll just measure up two inches from that mark that I just made, which intersects perfectly with the center mark that I already made. And so now I have a nice little cross right there that I can use to center up the bracket for the door. So most garage doors will have a, a piece of blocking put into the header right here so that they can install the spring, um, so that these bolts that are, that are used for the spring bracket are going into a header already. So chances are very good you'll already have a header up here, but you'll want to check to make sure. Uh, you can do this a number of different ways. A stud finder might work, but since it's probably completely solid, a stud finder might not be a great choice. You can try just knocking on the wall, but again, if it's solid, it's going to be a little bit difficult to tell. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to put the bracket up on the wall exactly where I want it placed, and then I'm going to mark each of the holes for the bracket, and then I'm going to use a small bit in my drill to drill pilot holes to see which ones hit studs. I think in this particular door, all four of them will, uh, but that's the best way to find out. One other quick note, you want to make sure when you put the bracket in that the lower edge of the bracket matches that line that you put that was two inches above the lower part of the measurement from your level. Once you've done that, it's easy to mark the hole locations, and then you can use a small drill bit in your drill to drill some pilot holes to see which of these fall into the blocking that's supposed to be up above your door. So now we're just going to drill pilot holes where the bracket indicated. And you know you're into a stud when uh, you can feel it drilling into the wood that's right behind this wall. So on this bracket, it does have an arrow that marks up, so you'll want to make sure that that's pointing up before you actually put these in. And then it's just a matter of shooting the bolts into the holes. Okay, that's nice and solidly connected. Now we can move on to the next thing. So our next step is to assemble the rail. And since we have the extension kit, we need to make sure that we don't use the short end piece, but rather use the long end piece from our extension kit. You can tell it's the end piece. These in my left hand, your right side, are regular rail pieces. These have a slot in the end for the pulley for uh, the belt that's going to be on the garage door opener. So you want to make sure you take the short one out and don't accidentally put that in your rail because pulling them back apart is kind of a pain in the neck. So the piece that's got the slot for the pulley goes closest to the garage door. The rest of them are all exactly the same, so it doesn't uh, matter which order you do them in. Is a small adapter that looks kind of like this. Yours may be different depending on your particular opener. And this adapter, just like the other pieces of the rail, just snaps in. So this opener has these two bolts right here uh, that are going to go through these holes, this one and this one, on that adapter plate. And because the rail is going down at an angle, I'm just going to tilt the opener up a little bit and hold it there while I put in this first bolt. Now that we've got the rails attached to the motor, the next thing is to attach the slide. Make sure you get this on going the correct direction. It does have an orientation that matters. And in this particular garage door opener, there's a little tab here that you need to bend up to a full 90 degrees after you've put that on. Just make sure that the uh, slide doesn't come farther off the rail than it's ever supposed to. This takes a little bit of force. There we go. That'll keep that from ever coming off the end. This opener also comes with this kind of odd shaped bolt that is a, a stop that gets installed to the back part of the rail here and secured with a nut. This will stop the slide from ever sliding too far this direction. I'll use the pliers to hold the bolt from the top and the crescent wrench to tighten the nut on the bottom. So up next is the belt and the pulley installation. You want to start with the belt before you put the pulley in because the belt has this uh, adapter hook thing on the end that won't fit through 
the slot for the pulley after the pulley has been put through. So just feed a little bit of the belt through. You don't have to feed a whole bunch, just enough to make sure that, the, that this end is completely clear of the hole. Then you want to put the pulley into the hole and then use the special bolt that comes with your kit to feed down through. Make sure you put on a lock washer and the nut that came with it. So now that the pulley is in, we're going to feed most of the belt all the way through. And most of our work is going to happen up near the motor now. So one end of the belt will have this hook on it, and that hook goes into this slot, just like that. Then you want to carefully run your hand down the entire length of the belt, all the way through the pulley and back around the motor to make sure you don't have any twists in the belt. Then you bring the belt all the way back around and engage it with the teeth of this pulley. When you do this, this is going to have a tendency to want to slide away from you. So grab a screwdriver and put it into this hole. Let it slide down to that hole and then we're going to feed the belt. Next we're going to use this tensioner to apply the correct tension to the belt. Now this comes factory set and there are specific instructions for this specific uh, opener that are not necessarily going to be the same for all openers. But for this particular opener, this nut, or this, uh, this bolt here, is in a D shape. This side of it is completely flat. I don't know how well you can see that. But the ring, or the hole that this goes through, is, uh, is also a D shape. So if you try and stick it in, in the wrong orientation, it won't go. It does slide easily once you have the orientation correct, though. Once that is in, you can put this back on a few turns. And then you've got a master link that looks like a bicycle chain link. It comes in three pieces. And you're going to use that to attach the belt to the end of this bolt. So I'll do that now. Once you've assembled the two halves of the chain link, you use this small clip. There we go. Yeah, that goes on very easy with a pair of pliers. Now to tension this correctly, you want to pull this as tight as you can with just your fingers and thread this on just until it's finger tight. There will be a fair bit of slack to take up in the belt. One last check to make sure nothing is twisted and that the belt is running the correct orientation. I'm going to take a flathead screwdriver and wedge it down into one of the slots in the back of this the bolt thing. And then use a wrench to turn it about a quarter, about a quarter turn. Oh, whoops, I got it on the wrong slot. So you want to take a flathead screwdriver <laughs> and shove it down in there so it pops that spring off. And that's going to tension this to just the right amount of tension for your belt. Okay, our next step is to install the door end of the rail up into the bracket we put up at the top of the door. So this is attached with a clevis pin and a small ring that goes through to lock it in place. Just want to line up the rail with the bracket. Push the clevis pin straight through. And then the ring goes through the hole in the small end of the clevis pin. And that locks it so it won't come out. So the next thing I'm going to do is measure the distance from the end of the rail here. If I can hook that tape on the end of that. All the way down to the center mounting hole in this bracket. 130 inches in my case. In your case, of course, it'll be different. And then I'm going to measure the same 130 inches from the wall along the ceiling that will indicate exactly where the center of the motor will fall once it's rotated up in place. And that'll show me where I need to put the L bracket into the ceiling so that it will line up with the center of the motor. 130 is right there. Okay. 
And next we're going to measure the distance from this far wall to the center of where the rails go. 61 and a half from that wall. And then we'll use that to mark 61 and a half inches from the wall where the motor is. 61 and a half is right here. So now that I've marked this cross here, that's where the center of the motor needs to fall. So I'm gonna put an L bracket across this way to uh, span the trusses, and then we'll get the motor up here centered under that L bracket, and uh, that'll be our next step. So the ceiling joists in this home are 24 inches on center. So I'm gonna cut this bracket at 28 inches to give us a little bit of extra room. So now that we've cut this L bracket, it's going to go right up here and span the joist that is a, about here in the ceiling and across this joist here. And I am trying to make sure that this is as square to the door as possible, as parallel to the door. I am just having to kind of eyeball it though. So with this bracket held up like this, I can mark one hole here, and then I can see the tape and screws that are in the ceiling from this next joist over. And it looks like I need to hit right there. So I'm going to drill some pilot holes there and see if I hit some joists. All right, it's the moment of truth. We're going to swing the motor up and we're going to suspend it uh, at first just on top of the ladder and then I've got a couple of bungee cords I'm going to show you a little trick that I'm going to use to suspend it up there once we get up. I'll put a bungee cord near the center of the bracket, lift the motor up, and then wrap the bungee cord around the rail and that'll suspend the motor fairly close to where it needs to be to make it a little easier to put in the vertical brackets that we're about to put in. So what I'm going to be doing here, I've got this level on the rail, and it happens to be a magnetic level, which is uh, going to make this a little bit easier. Stick a tape measure on the ceiling, and the bracket's length need to come right down to the top of the motor housing itself. That'll make sure that it's lining up with the, with the anchor holes for the mounting brackets. And we're just going to lift up the motor. It doesn't require hardly any force at all because the bungees are doing most of the work. And I'm just watching the bubble in that level. There we go, nice and level that way. And it looks like we need eight inches down from the ceiling. So we'll cut our brackets at maybe seven and three quarters. Uh, and uh, that'll give us a little bit of play. We'd rather have them slightly too short than slightly too long. For installing these, I have a small bolt and a large fender washer. And then it'll go through the bracket and then it'll need a lock washer and a locking nut. Now if you don't happen to have some bungee cords like this, you could set a box on the top of your ladder, or if you had a second ladder, you could even uh, support the rail instead of supporting the motor itself. Anything you can do though to get this suspended up in the air like this will make this job very, very easy. I'm not sure you can see this from your angle, but the, the brackets that are on the top of the motor are actually just folded up from the steel of the case of the motor, and they will bend down relatively easily once you've got these attached. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna grab this and use it to bend over. Now that it's tight, this is not gonna move at all. It's very, very solidly attached. And now I can remove this bungee cord. Now you'll be tempted at this point to plug it in. Don't plug it in. You've got to do all your wiring first. So up next we're going to install the bracket that goes on the door that is going to uh, attach to the opener. And this door already has this horizontal support piece that has a bolt that is in exactly the correct spot for where we want this top hole to line up. So we're going to take that out and use that to locate our other holes. The bracket does have an up that's marked on it, so make sure that when you're putting your bracket in that you put the up, you know, facing up. Okay, so the next step is to release the trolley and slide it back so you can attach the arm that comes down into the angle bracket that's going to be attached to the door. 
We're actually going to start by the next step is going to be putting the angle bracket onto the door here. When you put on this angle bracket, you want to make sure that you do it the correct orientation. One leg is going to have multiple holes in it, and that leg is the one that goes up towards the ceiling. The other one is the one that attaches to the door. And uh, it's just going to have a little clevis pin, just like when we put in the rails, and a small ring that locks that clevis pin in place. Next is the down rod, and again, this one does have a direction. The, the end that's got all the holes in it needs to go down towards the door. The other end you attach with a clevis pin, just like all the other connections we've been doing. And again, with a little ring to keep it locked in place. Just like that. So when you're mounting, you want to do, you want to try and make it so that you can put a bolt in the farthest hole and the other farthest hole. If you have to, you can use this hole here, but it's best if you can use the two outer holes. And you don't want to have too much of an angle on your opener arm like this when the door is completely closed. And that's why there's multiple different holes you can use to get that angle to be a little bit shallower. So we're going to try and aim for about like that kind of an angle there. With one caveat, and that is you're going to have a little bit of extra sticking out at the bottom here. If it comes down really far, then when your door opens, it could potentially swing into and damage the door. So after we attach this, we're going to open it very carefully just a little bit to see what this is going to do and make sure it's going to clear the door correctly. All right, now that that's on, I'm going to slowly open this door to see how this swings and make sure that it's going to clear. We've got plenty of clearance on this door. So this is the wiring that the builder installed, but it's not been marked, so we don't know which side is for which side up at the top there, and we're not sure which wire goes for the opener by the door to the house. So what I'm going to do here is what's called a continuity test, which will help us determine which wire is which up at the ceiling. So to do a continuity test, the first thing you do is strip back some of the wire, and then we're just going to twist it together so that it makes a good solid connection. And then I have a basic multi-tester here, and I've set it to what's called the continuity test setting. And in this setting, when you touch both ends of the probes together, it makes a sound. So now all I have to do, since I have connected both strands, both leads of this wire together. All I have to do is go up to the ceiling next to the garage door opener and touch both ends of each set of wires up there until I find the one that is currently connected and that will tell me that's the wire that runs down to this side. Okay, so just like I did down by that side of the door, I'm going to strip off the ends of this wire. And we're going to see if we get lucky, and it happens to be the first one we test. I've got my multi-tester in continuity test mode. Touch that wire to that wire. No sound. That's not the one that goes to that side. Push that one out of the way. We'll try the next one. Okay, this is the one that's going down to one side, so this is a sensor wire. And now we're going to go and check the one coming out of the wall by the door to see if that is this other stripped one. If it's not, then that tells us this is the door and these two are the sensors. I'm gonna go and do the same connection to the one by the door. Okay, so now that we're back up top with the door uh, twisted together and the one sensor twisted together, this was the one that we did earlier that we decided was that sensor down there. This was the one from earlier that was not doing anything at all. So we know that that one has to be the sensor to the other side, which means this one must be the door. And we can verify that. And it does. So I'm going to tie the door one kind of up into a loop like this. So we know that that's for the door. And the other two we know are the sensors. So the next step is to install these brackets that are going to be used to hold the sensors and they just clip right onto the track. Now you do want to make sure that they are evenly spaced height wise. I already did the other side and its top falls right at five and a half inches. So I'm going to put this one on at the exact same height. 
five and a half, just like that. And they just push on and they hold themselves there just like that. Since this house already has the wiring installed, we're just gonna give ourselves plenty of extra. We don't wanna to cut too close to this end and we're gonna snip off the wire that came with these sensors. And then we can strip off about a half inch or so off the end there and then pull our wires back that we previously connected together for the continuity test. Now it's very important that we make sure that we wire these the same. So in this case, I'm gonna go white to white and the one that has the black stripe is gonna to go to the red of the house wiring. And that'll make a difference when we get up to the wiring on the motor itself. And just connect these with some wire nuts. Once those connections are made, then you put this small bolt into the back side of the sensor. And then the sensor gets mounted into its bracket with this small wing nut. Make sure you can see the LED that is on the outside of the sensor. You'll need to be able to see that during normal operation to make sure the sensors are working correctly. Finally, if you have a staple gun, you can staple these wires back up to the wall so they're out of the way. If you don't have a staple gun, you can just coil them up, being careful not to introduce too much tension on the wire, and uh, zip tie them so that they stay out of the way. And we're going to do the other side exactly the same way. While we're over here just having finished the sensor, one other quick note, you may as well go ahead and remove this rope. This was installed by the builder since there was not an opener in here. This is what was used to open the door. Now that we have an opener, you don't need it anymore. Just untie it at both ends and, and discard it. All right, so now we're gonna wire the button for the wall right by your door. And to do this, you wanna strip off a little bit of the leads. And then it's uh, really handy if you've got needle nose pliers like this to bend them over into kind of a shepherd's crook or a J shape. And then you can see on the back here, we've got a red and a white. So just unscrew each of these screws, not too far, maybe two and a half turns or thereabouts, just enough to get the, the wires onto them. I'm gonna need to strip back a little bit more of the sheathing so I can spread them out that far. Let me take care of that now. A little pro tip for you. As you're screwing these in, make sure that the, uh, that the J at the end of the wire is going with the screw, not against it. Otherwise, when you screw these in, it'll just pop that wire right back out on you. And again, you don't want to tighten these down so tight that it breaks off that wire. The copper's pretty soft. So that is gonna mount just like that. There's a screw hole right there. There's another screw hole roughly behind that logo. It's down just a little bit from the logo. Locating that's always a little bit of a trick. So first I'm gonna locate that upper screw hole. But it's pretty precise. And then we're gonna measure the distance from the upper screw hole to the lower one is three and a quarter. So then I'm going to measure down and if I let my tape just hang it's going to act as kind of a level a pendulum more or less that's going to give me a fairly straight line straight down so three and a quarter is right there so this first screw doesn't go in completely tight it just goes in so there's about a fingertip you can just hook it behind it that's a nice snug fit on the lower screw, so now we're gonna put in the upper one. And for this particular opener, we just flip up this little flap, and there's a hole that goes all the way through. Make sure that it is nice and vertical. It's nice and solid on the wall. So now we're finally ready to finish the wiring to the opener itself. We've got a lot of extra length on these, and rather than cut it back, I'm gonna coil it up so it helps keep these wires up and out of the way. But we've got extra length in case we ever need it in the future. So for this particular opener, 
Yours may be different. You'll want to consult the installation manual to be sure. This is the uh, wire for the opener on the wall. And we've got little receptacles. The red one goes in the red. You've got to depress that little button below the receptacle. And the white one goes in the white. I'm trying to do this without getting in the way so you can see what I'm up to. Once you put them in, give them a little tug, make sure they're nice and snug. Now the sensors are done a little bit differently. And again, before I do the wiring, I'm going to coil them up. You may recall when we put the sensors in that the colors down at the wall were a little bit different. But the black wire, or the wire that off the sensor that was white and black, I wired to the red leads in the wall. And the white ones I wired to the white leads in the wall. So up here, we're going to connect these two together. The red and the red get twisted together, and the white and the white get twisted together. And we'll just do that with a pair of pliers. You do need to twist them fairly tight, because they're going to have to fit into that little hole. All right, we've got our red and our white nice and snug together there. So now, we will put the white leads into the white hole. Might be a little bit too big at the end still. Squeeze them with the pliers and try again. Yep, that's nice and snug now. And then we'll do the same with the red. Okay, and those are nice and snug as well. While we're up here, let's put our light bulbs in. All right, once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and close this to make sure all the wiring is out of the way. You'll note that you've got these wires hanging down. That's normal. These are your antenna wires. Don't strip them, don't cut them, don't mess with them. Just leave them right where they are. They're designed to be just free, flo free floating, just like that. You might have to undo the twist tie that's on your wires, but these are gonna reach just fine. So I'm actually gonna tighten this down a little bit. I also made sure to check the travel of the belt as it goes back past here to make sure it's not gonna get anywhere close to these wires and that they're not gonna interfere with its travel. Go ahead and plug this in. The blinking light is normal. It's telling you that it's powering up for the first time. And we're ready to test. Okay, so now that we've powered it on, let's try it for the first time. Just grab your opener. Usually they come programmed from the factory to work with the opener that, uh, that they come with. If not, you can always use the wall opener for your initial test. And we're going to push the button and uh, see what it does. It's not supposed to do that. It's just dawned on me. When I installed the belt, I did it with the trolley up near the motor. I should have done it with the trolley near the door. So to fix this, I'm going to need to detension the belt, rotate it all the way around so that it is down by the door, and then tension the belt again. Life's not perfect. What are you going to do? and we're ready to try this one more time. So here we go. All right. So now we're gonna cycle it all the way back down. And I'm betting it's gonna hit the bottom, stop and go right back up. And the reason it's doing that is because the travel distances need to be adjusted on the motor. And the motor does have some controls that you can use to adjust how far up it goes and how far down it goes. This one, you press and hold the program button until the up begins to flash. And then you press and hold the up button until the door comes as far up as you want it to go. Then you press the down button until the door goes down as far as you want it to go. Press and release the adjustment button. All 
right. Press and release the up button. And the door should go all the way open. And then we'll press the down button to verify that it's going to go all the way down. Okay, so now that we've adjusted the travel to be just about exactly where we want it to be, the next thing we want to test, there's, there's two last things to test. The first are the sensors to determine uh, if they're working correctly. The first way you can tell if they're working correctly is the lights that are on the backs of them will be lit up. One's amber and one's green. As long as they're not blinking, as long as they're actually on, then they're working correctly. If you put your hand in front of them, then the green light turns off. The amber on this one stays on. It's going to be different on each kind of opener. So if you just watch the, the green, stick your hand in there, you can see that those sensors are working. Now let's verify that they're actually working. I'm going to open the door, let it get up some way, and then I'm going to start to close it and I'll break that with my foot. And yes, those sensors are working correctly. The second thing you want to test is the downforce of the garage door opener. If it detects something is in the way, like the car, or a kid or something that the sensors at the bottom failed to check, then you're going to want to make sure that the door doesn't try and crush that. So without getting my foot in the path of the sensors, I'm just going to try and stop it with my hand. It takes a fair bit of pressure, but it did stop. It wouldn't hurt anybody. You also want to check the same thing on it coming up. So I'm going to lower the door. And then I'm going to try and open the door and give it some down pressure. And it stops. And it does that in case there's some obstruction up above in the tracks or some boxes on shelves or something of that nature. So there you go. Thanks for uh, watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If, uh, if you've noticed I did something wrong, let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button down there. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. And uh, now I don't have to lift open this garage door all the time. So thanks for watching and thanks for uh, paying attention and I don't really know what to say at the end of these things. I always, I always stumble over myself with these. Leave me a comment, tell me what I did right or what I did wrong or if I look too funny and... See, now I, I'm off the rails, I don't know what else to say. So I'll give myself just the amount of time it takes to close to wrap this thing up.